So here you are, you've been watching our channel for years or months or days or whatever many hours that you've invested in us. You've been to scrapyards before and you're obviously invested in the scrap markets. How do you open a scrapyard? This is a question that we've been asked many times and there's a lot of different steps that go into it. Number one, you better have a very large amount of capital. What does that mean? Money, 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 money. You can't start a scrapyard with five grand in your pocket. You probably can't start a scrapyard with $50,000. By the time you invest in a building, a name, incorporation, taxes, insurance, tools, equipment, trucks, dumpsters, bins, all of these things cost money. And without a large sum of startup money, you're only gonna be able to do things on a scrapper plus level because you're gonna be constricted by the amount of money that you can spend. At Rockaway Recycling, we started originally as a man in a truck. And over the years, as my dad was able to build the business up, he was able to rent a different bay, started storing materials there, and eventually had permission to start his scrapyard. But these are not things that happen very, very often in modern day society. Most towns, municipalities, cities don't want scrapyards starting. In fact, I heard a story recently about a major city in the Midwest that retracted different permits from scrapyards after they invested millions of dollars in equipment saying, no, we aren't gonna allow you to operate there. You have to move your equipment. So if you're talking about starting a scrapyard, where you need to start is really the most important part. What town are you gonna be in? What are the permitting fees? How long does it take to get approved? What do you need to do to protect the water? What do you need to do to protect the ground soil? These are questions that you might not think about and if you're really looking to learn and figure out how to start a scrapyard, you can message us. We're available for consulting fees and we'd be able to give you more information. But I can tell you this, it is very hard to start a scrapyard in the modern day society, even though we contribute to the green movement because of the environmental regulations that are involved. So starting a scrapyard sounds good, but if you don't have a quarter million dollars to be able to invest in facilities, trucks, equipment, shears, wire strippers, buying software, following all of the local rules and laws and regulations. If you don't have that type of money or time, it's gonna become a very hard thing to do. Not many people are starting them nowadays and as many of you see, you generally go to the same one that has been around for decades because they're grandfathered in. That's really important too. I talked to someone who leases a piece of property from someone else and he won't buy it from them because the over concern of different type of environmental problems from the previous owner. So instead of buying that piece of land, he's only renting that piece of land because there could be half a million dollars in environmental cleanup that he doesn't know about. So these are a lot of things that you may not think about when you say, oh, I want to start a scrapyard. It looks like I could make money there. There are steps. OSHA guidelines and other things that really go into it. And if you're looking to really learn more, we're available for hired eye scrap for consulting fees on how to start scrapyards. And you're welcome to either message us or private message us through the website. Any other questions on starting a scrapyard or what to do with it? Just let us know. Until next time though, I'll scrap you later. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to and you haven't already, please subscribe below for more videos or become a Patreon supporter to get more information on Scrap today.